information for preparing that report. <clears throat> we um, also developed a draft engagement strategy, process, overview, and content, which is the main purpose of getting together today is to talk about that engagement strategy. So with an initiative like this, which is very complex, you need to have a roadmap to show you where you're going. So uh, this year, um, our main objectives are to developing a work plan and a resourcing plan, which includes a funding strategy. Uh, we're doing, we want to complete our stakeholder engagement strategy, and then uh, develop the terms of reference for a planning process. Lastly, we want to also define um, ecosystem-based management for this area, provide a definition for that. <clears throat> So moving into next year, uh, we're going to be developing ecological and socioeconomic objectives and indicators. And then for each of those objectives and indicators, we'll identify strategies and management measures. For example, some spatial management plans and best management practices. <clears throat> Come 2012, uh, we plan to have a completed draft integrated management plan, and that would be uh, presented to our minister for approval. So it's rather ambitious, but um, we um, we, are, we anticipate uh, making a lot of headway in the next uh, couple of years. So um, for more information on the PINSEMA process, Neil Davis is our uh, PINSEMA coordinator, and he's the main contact for any, any questions you may have on this process. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. And we'll take a few questions now, though, sort of of a general nature. And I think the gentleman at the back there had one before. Sure. Thank you. I'll start with a confession. I'm astonished that anyone's even here. How was this meeting advertised locally? How was the public, presumably on behalf of the wilderness exercises being conducted, supposed to find out about this meeting? So I can, I can respond to that. Um, there are a few ways that we tried to let people know. There were advertisements in the local papers. Um, it must have been tiny because I looked for them and I never saw them. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I'd have to find the details on the size and when they were posted. Uh, but in addition to that, we also um, have a listserv of people that we send out notification to. Um, for you. We, we also had a radio spot. Uh, earlier today, I don't know if there's anything previous to that in terms of radio advertising. So it's okay, a bit so, so if you didn't listen to that particular radio station mm -hmm. today, then you wouldn't have heard it on the radio. Yeah, and there's also information that's available on the website that details when the meetings are and where they are. I, I understand that, but if you don't know about Pensema, you probably wouldn't know about the website. So, so the two primary ways then that we let people know are through the papers and through our listservs and through uh, word of mouth contacting you know, sort of different organizations and interest groups to let them know that this was happening. And could I ask who you contacted in the Campbell River area? So in the Campbell River area, uh, we spoke with local governments. Um, we've spoken with uh, certain representatives from the SFAB who we sort of encouraged to get the word out more broadly within their constituencies. Um, Sports Fish Advisory Board. Sorry, you don't know what that is. Sorry about the acronyms. Um, I'm sure I could think of some others if, if you gave me a moment or two more to think about it. Um, but if you have suggestions about how to do it more effectively, then we're certainly willing to listen. Well, I, I look forward to seeing these ads or pointing out about them. For the record, I'm part of the Sport Fish Advisory Board, and that's the only way I know about this. And I'm probably the email dialogue with some of my fellows further up. I have to say is not the observation. I'm completely underwhelmed by the um, ability for informed citizens to find out about this meeting. Is anyone here from the regional district? Is anyone here from the local municipal council? City hall? Can you meet them? So so it's certainly not that they don't know. Okay, and and it's not a matter of last minute notice in those cases either they've been notified about this for weeks. Okay, any other uh, general questions or points? Okay, we have one more presentation and then we're going to get into discussion. So that's, you only have to work through one more presentation. 
Neil's going to make this one. Thanks very much, Neil. Okay. So as Alex mentioned, you have uh, a bunch of documents on your table. And the one that I'm going to be speaking to primarily is the one that's titled the engagement strategy. Um, you should also have coming around a sign-in sheet uh, and, and just to sort of keep building on who we let know about what we're doing and, and uh, the things that happen in different communities, um, we encourage you to put your name down and your email or some other way of getting in touch with you to, um, to let you know about what's happening and keep you updated and, uh, and informed about um, where we're going with this. So <clears throat> what I want to do with this presentation is just give you a bit more detail about what you're seeing in that document and a bit more detail about each one of the bubbles in that diagram. Uh, that Alex showed you earlier. Um, so a bit of background around where this docu document came from, a bit about what we've heard on some of these ideas about engaging people to date, and then talking about how to get involved and where we're going past this meeting. When are you going to hear from us again and, and what are we doing after we leave here? So uh, just very briefly um, to sort of restate what I've already said, just talking a little bit about the strategy and summarizing some of the feedback that we've had about these ideas. So where did this engagement strategy come from? So if we go back one year, in March, there was this Pensema forum, had about 300 and some odd people in attendance, and one of the topics of conversation in that meeting was, uh, how do you see yourselves fitting into this planning process? So getting some initial feedback and some initial thoughts from a wide variety of interested and affected parties about how they might plug into something like this planning process. After that, there was a series of follow-up meetings to sort of have a bit more detailed discussion with different groups about um, what their engagement might look like and, and how this initiative is going to proceed. All of that led to, in the fall of 2009, the development of a, a very short document that sort of outlined some of the basic ideas about how uh, folks might engage within the broader Pensema initiative. And that, this, is, this is sort of the centerpiece of that, um, that early draft which came out in the fall. So what we had proposed was uh, that, that there be uh, opportunities for all of the different parties to work together, First Nations, governments, um, other interested parties. And we've identified three basic structures here. Now let me see what I've got here next. So each of these structures uh, was intended to, to sort of serve a different role or play a different role within the process. So first of all, there's this Integrated Oceans Advisory Committee, which is intended to be a, a, a place where all of the different parties come together to sort of have a multi-sectoral dialogue about how this initiative moves forward and to work on recommendations that would come out of an integrated management plan. The intention with these other bodies, the planning office being the first one, is that that's sort of a coordinating, administrative, technical body that does the day-to-day -day work. So that's people like me and Steve and, and my colleague Hillary, um, who are you know, doing things like planning these meetings, um, writing these documents, that kind of stuff. Uh, and that that group, that planning office, takes its direction from something that Alex referred to, which is a bilateral coordination steering committee. Now this is a group that has um, sort of managers and leaders from uh, different federal agencies, including Fisheries and Oceans, uh, Environment Canada, Natural Resources Canada, uh, Parks Canada, as well as uh, representatives from different for First Nations organizations. And it's a forum for them to sort of coordinate and support this initiative moving forward and provide some direction and oversight to that planning office. It sits within what we're calling a broader governance framework. So recognizing that there also needs to be a place for federal agencies to coordinate, get their acts together on issues related to oceans management, to sort of coordinate what they're doing, as well as a place for uh, federal agencies and provincial agencies to be doing much the same thing, where they speak to one another about things that they have in common and initi initiatives that they want to carry forward that, that require some level of coordination or cooperation. 